Hello there my fellow creators and welcome back to another video. Today we will not directly discuss notebooks, instead I would like to focus on how we edit our videos with Blackmagic's DaVinci Resolve 19. I will take you all along for the ride through our complete production workflow, starting right after we recorded everything all the way to the point of hitting that oh so sweet export button. You are probably also wondering why we are working on notebooks, since a desktop PC would give us a better experience and a lot more performance. Well, yes, obviously, but this channel is also called Notebook Check, so I pretty much committed myself to mostly work on the notebooks we are reviewing, to get a better feel for them when actually using them, and not just running a bunch of benchmarks and being done with it. This video is also sponsored by Notebooks Billiger and Nvidia, which is actually quite easy for me to integrate since Resolve 19 as a software suite loves fast dedicated GPUs and can also fully take advantage of more specific features of Team Green's architecture and certain key aspects their studio validation brings to the table for creators. We are also going to talk about AI and before you skip this video right away, hear me out. I am right there with you when it comes to all of this AI talk, I simply cannot hear it anymore. And in most instances it's really just marketing fluff without any real benefits for consumers right now. But I am actually using a lot of the built-in tools in Resolve that tap into Nvidia's Tensor Cores and they have transformed our video editing workflow quite a bit. And they also constantly add new stuff that is definitely useful and allows to either do completely new things that have not been possible before or speed up stuff that took forever in the past. So let's get into it. Right after we finished shooting our content, we would have to ingest our footage either directly onto our laptop's hard drive or onto a different external SSD. Thankfully, our Blackmagic camera records everything directly onto such a drive, so transferring our footage is usually done in a few minutes despite the fact that we are dealing with 2 to 300 gigabytes per video. By the way, we are using Razer's Blade 18 as an example today, and in addition to its obvious performance qualities with Nvidia's laptop RTX 4090, its mini LED panel comes with a few features that are especially important for video editors, but more on that later. In addition, the sleek 18 inch allows for RAM and storage upgrades, which is quite important if you work with such large files on a daily business. When loading our files into Resolve, our first order of business is to edit the talking head portions of our video. This means taking the original clips, which are roughly 30 to 60 minutes long, and reducing them to the 10 minute videos you are used to see on the channel. And this is our first and also the perfect example how you can really benefit from AI workflows as a video editor. In the past I would have to load the clip in its entirety onto my timeline, watch each take and cut out the parts I did not want. This was a very, very time consuming process. Editing the talking head part for each video alone could easily take between 1 and 2 hours. But in collaboration with Nvidia, Blackmagic introduced a transcription feature into Resolve quite a while ago. This process is greatly accelerated by the tensor cores within the latest GPU architecture and within a very, very short time you basically get the entire clip as a transcript. On the RTX 4090 in the Razer, for example, this takes barely enough time to get a freaking coffee. In the script, I can simply highlight the parts I need next for my video and easily add those to the timeline. And since I can already see which takes are complete, this cuts editing time for talking heads down by a very significant margin. Once we get our talking head ready, we need to add our B-roll. And while we do this, color grading is of course an important aspect of our workflow. This is also the first time the Plate 18 display comes into play. And without getting too technical, color management for video is a little different from photo editing. The general gist is that you need to control the colors on a hardware level with your display, since Resolve, contrary to Photoshop for example, cannot take your display profile and translate color spaces for you. So if you adjust your colors on a white color gamut display like this one and then post it on YouTube, most users will find it way too flat and desaturated. So to get a better representation of what most folks would see, you either need an sRGB or even better, the more video focused Rec. 709 profile pre-calibrated. 
Thankfully, more companies are starting to do this. And while it wasn't an option for last year's Blade, they went the extra mile for creators in 2024 and offered everything and then some you could need for a wide range of more color-critical workflows. Getting back to editing, another super useful AI feature is Speed Warp. It works a little bit like frame generation, you know from video games, by basically adding completely new frames to your footage and there are actually two ways to use this. For example, you could either slow down footage that hasn't actually been shot in slow motion and the results are very impressive for some very cinematic shots that look incredibly clean. Or, and this is almost more important, it can save your butt when you mess up something during recording. For example, our timeline is set to 25 pictures a second, so we also shoot in the very same setting in our camera. But unfortunately, I accidentally switched to a different setting while recording another project. And adding shots with a mismatched frame rate can lead to very choppy playback, which in the worst case could mean that you would either have to reshoot or, if you do not have that ability, could mean even more annoying consequences. But with Speed Warp, you can basically recalculate your footage and therefore save it for your projects. And while it's not exactly an NVIDIA exclusive feature, it is a very hardware intensive process and can take quite a long time depending on your footage. But since Resolve can once again tap into the tensor cores, you can shave off a lot of rendering time, making this feature a lot more useful in a time constrained production workflow. But not everything is of course AI magic and when it comes to editing our videos, it's the good old cut and match combining our talking head parts with our B-roll. We always try to use our eye candy shots on one hand to hide any cuts when I'm sitting here rambling about all the latest laptops, but also to illustrate and showcase whatever I am talking about. Again, our main production camera is a Blackmagic Pocket Simra Camera 6K, supported by a Panasonic Lumix S52X for anything handheld or on location. And combining multiple clips from both cameras on top of each other is asking for quite a bit of computing grunt. For the most part, a mobile RTX 4080 or 4090 is able to handle all of this without any dropped frames and in the native 4K resolution of our timeline, which makes editing very efficient and always gives us an accurate representation of what we are working on. For any lower tier GPUs, we would have to lower the view resolution to get smooth playback. Still, even that is not a huge deal and would allow me to do all of my editing even on a small notebook being equipped with an RTX 4060 for example, without having to do any additional pre-rendering. Unfortunately, we cannot do everything in Resolve, but we have to move over to Adobe's After Effects for our infographics. For what we do in there, you do not really need a ton of GPU horsepower, but what really helps is a lot of RAM. Thankfully, most of Nvidia's studio validated notebooks either offer upgradable memory, which is my preference, or are available with 64GB configs. Why is this important? Well, ideally I would work in Resolve and After Effects side by side. But with 32 gigs of system memory, both applications have to fight for the available resources, resulting in choppy playback when adding the rendered infographics into our timeline. So yeah, having the option for 64 gigs or even going up to 96 gigs definitely helps to maintain a streamlined editing workflow in this case. That covers pretty much everything and all we have to do now is export our videos. And to be quite honest with you, with an Nvidia Mobile 4080 or 4090 it's not really something I think about a lot, since for the most part our videos render a lot faster than in real time, leaving me barely enough time to get up and stretch my legs in between. Alright folks, before we wrap things up I quickly want to talk about two additional new features in Resolve that I am not using for now for our production, but that have the potential to be extremely useful in the future. For starters, in the latest version Blackmagic added an RTX enabled upscaler that can use your GPU's tensor cores to add a little bit of sharpness, which could be quite helpful if you add lower res footage to your 4K timeline or if you need to do some extensive cropping to focus on a specific detail for example. In addition, and the Blade 18's HDR capabilities would come into play here, you will quite soon have the ability to automatically convert your SDR videos into HDR content, given you have a screen that probably supports that with either a mini LED backlight or an OLED. And while it may not be as good as properly handcrafted HDR content, it would be amazing for creators like me to play around with this and potentially be able to release our videos on YouTube in HDR. 
I really cannot wait to try this in the future, since the demos I have seen so far using this tag looked very, very promising. But that should be it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this little walkthrough when it comes to our editing and general post-production workflow and I hope it wasn't too in-depth. Let me know if you enjoyed these more behind the scenes videos and a big shout out to Notebooks Belega and Nvidia, not only for sponsoring this video, but also for providing great tools and an ever growing number of software features that actively help us to get stuff done better and faster. If you want to get more in depth with the features I have talked about, please follow the links in the description. Thanks a ton for watching folks, make sure to check out our recent videos for more about laptops and content creation and do not forget to hit that like and sub button on your way out. My name is Alex, you have been amazing and I cannot wait to see you all in the next one. Take care.